Almost every culture around the world has stories and legends of mythical creatures, like the Loch Ness Monster in Scotland, the Chupacabra in South and Central America, the Vendigo in North America, and the Orang Pendek in Southeast Asia. And today we are going to look into one such creature, the Yeti, which is most commonly known as the Abominable Snowman. Hello my dear darling people, my name is Sanatan Pagare and thanks for tuning in to Bright Myth. The legend of the Yeti comes from the Himalayan regions of the Indian subcontinent and the Tibetan plateau. The Yeti is believed to be a bipedal creature, a mysterious one that lives on the snowy mountains and the one who sometimes leaves tracks on the thick snow for the people to find out later. The Yeti is often depicted to be a muscular ape-like creature which is covered in thick dark grey hairs or reddish brown hairs which weighs around 200 pounds to 400 pounds and is almost 6 feet tall. Well, that is the most commonly reported form of a Yeti. But in the stories, the Yeti comes in all shapes and sizes. In the early 1900s, when Westerners started traveling to the Himalayan regions of British India, the legend of the Yeti got even more popular. In the year 1921, a journalist by the name of Henry Newman interviewed some English explorers who had just returned from their Mount Everest expedition. The explorers told Newman that on their way, they found some very big and mysterious footprints in the snow to which their guys referred to be the footprints of the Metsokangmi, which meant men bear snowmen. Newman while translating the term Metsokangmi for his Calcutta newspaper The Statesman got the snowman part right but mistranslated the term Metso as abominable and that is where the term the abominable snowman was for the first time used to refer to the Yeti. In 1832, B. H. Hostin's experience while trekking in Nepal was published in the Journal of the Asiatic Society of Bengal by James Princep. In the journal, it was reported that the members of Hodgson's expedition group spotted a bipedal creature covered in thick dark hair which flee in fear away from the group. In the 20th century, as many more Westerners began attempting to scale the mountains in the region, the frequency of reported sightings of the Yeti increased, and so did the people's interest in the abominable snowmen. A member of the Royal Geographical Society, Ene Tombazi, in the year 1925 wrote that he saw a creature near Zemu Glacier in Sikkim, India. Tombazi wrote that the creature was bipedal and that it looked dark compared to the snow. The outline of the creature was almost like that of a man, but it was covered in thick hairs. Tombazi and his team observed the footprints of the creature once it left their sight and they found that the footprints were like that of a human, only 4 inches wider and 6 inches longer. Sir Edmund Hillary and his expedition group in 1951 took photographs of what they thought were Yeti footprints while attempting to scale Everest, but later they dubbed these photos to be an unreliable evidence of the creature. In 1954, English newspaper Daily Mail organized the snowman expedition for which mountaineer John Angelo Jackson and his team trekked from Mount Everest in Nepal to Mount Kanchenjunga in India. During this expedition, Jackson photographed many unidentifiable footprints which were much larger than that of a human being. But later, these footprints were attributed to be a byproduct of erosion in the region, which may have made the footprints of the people who may have passed from the place before the team that the photos were taken much larger than they should have been. Jackson also famously captured the symbolic paintings of the Yeti in photos at Tangboche Gompa. Now before we go any further, if you've liked the episode so far, please make sure to like the episode, share the episode and comment down below. It really helps us a lot if you do that. Also, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for future content. This episode is also available on all the podcasting platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, etc. And their links are down in the description box. So if you could just use that link and follow us over there, it would really mean a lot. And with that said, it is time to jump back into the episode. In the same year, Daily Mail also published an article stating that they have successfully acquired a specimen of hair from what was believed to be a scalp of the Yeti from Pangboche Monastery. Professor Frederick Wood Jones analyzed this hair and concluded that the hair was not from the scalp 
blood was from some other parts of the body, but he could never pinpoint which animal the hair was taken from. Still, he was convinced that the hair didn't come from any bear or ape-like creature. In his book The Long Walk, Slavomi Ravish claimed along with his team to have come across two bipedal creatures while crossing the Himalayas in the winter of 1940. These creatures were seemingly doing nothing but shuffling in the snow and blocked the team's path for hours. In 1960, Sir Edmund Hillary headed the Silver Hut expedition in the Himalayas with the objective to collect physical evidence of the Yeti. In this expedition, Hillary acquired the scalp of a Yeti from Komjong Monastery and then brought the scalp to London to be examined. After the examination, it was concluded that the skin on the scalp was made from the skin of an animal which was closely related to the sarrow, but was not identical to it. In 2013, geneticist Brian Skies from Oxford invited people from around the world to submit Yeti hairs teeth or tissue which were supposedly taken from a Yeti sighting. He received a total of 57 samples and 36 of which were chosen for a DNA testing. When tested, these samples turned out to be from well-known animals like cows and bears, except for two. One of them was from Bhutan and the other one was from India. These samples from India and Bhutan were found to be an exact match of the jawbone of the Pleistocene polar bear from 40,000 years ago. After discussing the aforementioned sightings and people's experiences of the Yeti, all we can say is that most of the evidence that has come forward of the creature's existence so far is mostly anecdotal and circumstantial. Many researchers over the years have come up with the explanation for the legends and existence of the Yeti. Some have proposed that the Yeti is nothing but people misidentifying the Himalayan wildlife such as the Langur monkey Himalayan brown bear or Tibetan blue bear for being the Yeti. In the year 2003, Japanese researcher Dr. Makoto Nabuka came up with the explanation that the word Yeti is a corrupted version of the word Meti, which is a regional Tibetan dialect word for bear, and so possibly the Yeti is a bear and not an ape-like creature. Some say that the Yeti could very well be today's specimen of the Gigantopithecus which was a quadrupedal giant ape which is extinct. The only problem with this theory is that in most of the Yeti legends, it has been portrayed as a bipedal creature. So nobody really knows what the Yeti is or was or if it ever existed. All we can say for now is that the Yeti is a creature which only exists in myths and legends. Because if it existed today, with today's science and technology, it would have been already discovered. I mean, we have drones now, we can just fly them over the mountains to know if the creature exists. Just saying. Just saying. And if the creature existed and now it is extinct, it is going to be very difficult to find the remains which can prove the Yeti's existence because the Himalayan region is big. It is spread across six countries, it is the highest region on the planet Earth and also one of the most secluded and remote. And any expedition just for finding physical evidence of the Yeti would be a very hard and expensive maneuver. So for now, it would be better if we let the Yeti just be a creature of the legends. And with that said, see you next time. Bye.